Uh, hello, everybody. This is a beautiful Wednesday morning, and today is June 17. You can see it right there. Okay, I'm Rakesh Fester, your distance education English teacher for this whole month. All right, so welcome to my class. Uh, I'm happy that, okay, I'm on air, and we're going to learn something interesting about English language today. Uh, from experience, okay, I would like to talk to everybody, like uh, maybe I should simply wonder very quickly and imagine about the situation, situation like your teachers asking you to speak some something in the class, your teachers asking you to prepare something for the assembly, or maybe like you're interacting with your friends and uh, you, you go to speak something, okay. What is your situation like? I'm pretty sure like you will start shaking, uh, you will fumble, you will freeze, and you will feel like, okay, you shouldn't speak. Why does it happen? Why do you have this fear? It's simple, okay, because you are poor with grammar skills. If you are good at grammar, believe me, okay, you can just do everything that you want and you can be a very good speaker in public. But for that, of course, you need a lot of grammar drill lessons. And that's why today I am here to cover some interesting lessons from grammar. For today's class, okay, I have chosen voice. Voice is considered quite difficult by many uh, non-native speakers. For native speakers, it's easy because they're used to it this. They know the structure, they know the practice, and they even know how to implement voice in a particular structure, in writing, in speaking. But we don't. That's why, okay, I will focus on voice today and I try to make it very easy for all of you, regardless of all those difficult times and the odds that you have been living with your life. We will today try to make voice very easy. So you can see on the screen, uh, actually I was killing time. Uh, I was early, okay, here in the studio, and I thought, like, okay, I, I can write some sentences for you. This is just to make sure that I can save time for later. Anyways, uh, so what gives you strength? I have just told you about grammar actually gives you strength for public speaking. For today's class, we're going to talk about voice, active and passive, the basic things that you already know. So let's take a few examples first before we start demonstrating and illustrating everything on the board. So you've got it here, active. The way you have known active voice is like you focus on the subject, your subject becomes very important, and you concentrate on the idea of subject. That is how we use active voice. Now, when the subject does something, we use active voice. So, in a way, we call the subject the doer or the accent performer. All right? So, we got an example sentence, okay, on your screen. Uh, people said good luck flowers. Here, we all know people, okay, is the subject and it is a doer. Sell is the verb. It is an active voice because the subject people is doing something here. It can be okay in different tense. We are going to talk about that later. And you have good luck flowers, a bunch of these three words. Good, uh, good luck flowers is the object and it is a receiver. So the basic idea of active voice that we have learned up to now is there is a subject, there is an object, and there is a verb. Subject does something okay by using the word upon the object and hence the subject becomes a doer and object becomes the receiver. In the same way, okay, if you study passive, okay, it is used when the subject is not the doer of an accent but the receiver. Okay, we put the receiver of an accent as the subject, so we interchange subject and object, object and subject. I will illustrate that later, okay, after a while. Uh, and we put the doer of an accent as the object at the end of the sentence. The previous sentence, okay, people sell good luck flowers now becomes in passive. Good luck flowers are sold by people. You might wonder why I have kept by people, okay, in bracket. Simple reason is because by people is obviously understood case. So even if I don't write uh, by people and just say good luck flowers are sold, I think this is understood and it is clear. So I would avoid all those obvious objects. Uh, now you got that, okay, that was what I explained to everybody. 
few more examples. I should take four, and then we will be on with the board and the practice. So the first sentence I've picked up here is like, mom serves delicious food items during festivals. Mom is the subject, you know it. Serves the verb in present tense, delicious food items, okay, is the object. During festivals is simply the extension. We don't need that here, but I put it here for a purpose. I'll define that with example. See, how do you put that in PC? Very simple. Delicious food items are served by mom, okay, during festivals. Or you can try this way too. During festivals, comma, delicious food items are served by mom. One simple example, we move on to the next example. People sweep tombs with brooms at Qingmeng Festival in China. So here, you know it, people is the subject again. Tombs is the object, tombs become subject, people, the subject becomes object. Tombs are swept because swept is the verb three of the verb sweep. Tombs are swept with brooms at Qingming Festival in China. And here too, I, will prefer, uh, I prefer to exclude people because that is obvious. People lit traditional deals at the Pauli last year. So I've used a past tense sentence here and now if I try to transform this active into passive it will read like this. Traditional deals were lit okay, at the Pauli last year. And the last example comes, my favorite example because this is a band I love a lot, Angus the band or the lead guitarist. Angus shreds the lead guitar for ACTC. Now, we know it. Angus, okay, is the subject. The lead guitar is the object. Hence, the passive transformation of Angus shreds the lead guitar for ACDC becomes the lead guitar is shredded by Angus for ACTC. Now is the practice time. See, for me, okay, I'm a teacher. It's easy because I've practiced this for several years and I've taught okay, groups of people. It might have gone even okay, beyond thousands. But right now, okay, for a teacher, it won't be difficult to transform these ideas. See, very simple. People speak English everywhere. Okay? I would very quickly put the answer. English is okay, spoken everywhere. This is easy. The villagers are constructing a breeze, okay? I would put it answer again. A breeze is being constructed, okay? Now, I know the object, that is a subject in the active voice. So I put it the by preposition or the prepositional object, I would call it by the villagers. So for me, it's not difficult. Even for this one, Peter read the college admission processor would become, okay, the college admission procedure. See, look at the tense here. This is read, quite confusing. Peter read. Read is past tense. So I would use a past verb. The college admission procedure was read by Peter because Peter is known okay so I focus on the proportional object now how can you make this very easy for you for that I would like to draw a diagram and we will try to understand okay the voice in diagrammatic okay explanations traditionally okay many teachers and many students okay they learn the ideas of going through syntax like Simple present tense would become something like, you see, subject plus object plus verb, and then you transform okay, with that syntax. Quite difficult for many students. So I have got one easy way of understanding voice. I'm going to draw the figure right here. And while I'm doing this, okay, uh, if you can copy this, you can just understand it very quickly. And later, when we will have more sentences to come over, okay, you can use that diagram. So the most important part in understanding voice is the use of be verb. Now be is one interesting verb because it has got the largest numbers of family. You know them. Is, am, are, was, where, okay, be, been, being. Now how to okay, categorize these ideas. I'm going to draw them and illustrate you on boards. I prefer to use blue for that. So I will mark five different areas 
to make sure we can distribute the beaver for varieties of tenses we're going to study under voice. First, you know the two common, okay, am and are. Then I would separate was and where. I'll separate be, okay. I'll separate being, and then I'll separate been. So you can count, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what is a verb missing here? A be verb is missing here. There should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now what is that verb that is missing? If we can just think on that and find it out for present, we use am, um, okay, and are. For past, we use was and where. For continuous structures, we use being. And for present perfect structure, we use been. For simple future, okay, we use be. Now, right now, we're going to work on only these. And later, okay, if you need another, we're going to find out that too. But how to work with this is, see, we're going to make it very simple. If I'm using am and are, I would use it with simple present tense. All right? This is to focus on only simple present tense. This is to focus on only simple past tense. This is the focus on all sorts of, okay, it won't cover, the camera won't cover right there. Okay, probably this is for continuous structures. This is for perfect structures. Okay, and this is for simple future. This is for simple future. All right. Now, how to make it work? Let's take an example. Will be easy for you? Okay, look at here. Uh, previously, I solved three sentences. One, two, three. Now, we're going to take, okay, sentence number four. And I will try to help, okay, you in understanding voice in the simplest way possible. Number one, okay, number four. Now, is scientists from NASA. Scientists from NASA will explore will explore Saturn okay in 2030 this is just a prediction okay maybe they have already done it I really don't know but this is just a prediction now look at here my dear scientists from NASA will explore Saturn in 2030 so you've got scientists from NASA because this is a part of the subject enlarged enlarged here scientists from NASA is the subject then you've got okay Saturn is the object in 2030 is the time extension and you have got a verb will indicating future tense and explore is the main verb so how do I transfer the basic concept is like you already know Saturn okay is the object so hence it becomes subject here Saturn since this is a future tense I would use a future now remember very important point in every passive transformation, transformation from active, tense must remain constant throughout the time. You cannot change the tense. If it is present tense, it must remain present. Even in the present tense, if it is uh, simple present, it must remain simple present. If it is continuous, it must remain continuous. All right. So Saturn will, then we go to the diagram. See, simple future, we go to use B. Saturn will B, and then we need to identify the main verb in the main sentence, and that is explore. So what is the verb three of explore? We always use one thing, and that is, okay, the use of verb three, which I call it, or everyone calls it actually, okay, past participle. The verb three structure is the most important part in understanding basic voice because after every transformation the last verb in every basic voice is always verb three so Saturn will be and we got the verb one explore and that becomes explored so simple as this Saturn will be explored by whom okay by I would mention okay sorry I will mention that here by scientists okay in 2030 now if I do this way okay it's become easy this is what I have done second sentence okay I would quickly choose 
This time, okay, I'm going to choose number six. That will be easy for all of us. Okay. This is the sentence. The messy flood. Okay. The messy flood gobbled. This is the verb. Covered many acres of land. Okay, here, now let's explore. Uh, so you've got the massive flood as the subject. This is the subject. Cobbled is your verb. And then many acres of land, okay, becomes your object. By rule, okay, what do we do? We simply bring, okay, this many acres of land, okay, here as the subject of a new sentence in PC voice, okay. Many acres of land, okay. So do not con get confused with land. You use the word many as a qualifier, so it becomes plural. Then my next task is to quickly identify, okay, the tense so that I can use my ideas from the verb that I have drawn, the diagram that I have drawn. Cobbled is the verb, and this is past tense. It's verb too, so I should go for the simple past tense right over here. I can point it out. This is simple past, was and where. Now, from was and where, what shoots, okay, many? It's where. So that becomes many acres of land where, okay, and the verb three of gobble is gobbled itself. So many acres of land were gobbled, okay, by who? The massive flood. Now that becomes quite easy for me because I follow the diagram, all right? Now let's explore some more number of sentences. This time, okay, I'm not going to write everything on the board. Rather, I would prefer to explain those ideas with new sentences. I got it here in frame two. This is questions frame two, double objects, okay? And because the one example, unless I show you, it's going to be challenging, I'm going to rob the board. Uh, remember about, okay, the my ideas on the diagram, you must have copied that, I'm pretty sure. So sometimes a challenging question you have to appear in your exam is this, and that is, Okay, I got a sentence right here. Jackson doesn't offer. Jackson doesn't offer a rupain a cake. All right, this is it. So Jackson doesn't offer rupain a cake. Now, what is interesting about this particular sentence, my dear students, okay, is here. Let me just show that to you. Jackson doesn't offer. Offer what? You got the first object, and that is rupain but if i simply say and end my sentence jackson doesn't offer rupain like what is not offered you do not know so you require one more object a kick and hence we've got two objects here now how to work with sentence that has got two objects okay in transformation active and passive simple again first we need to identify the objects we have already identified here Okay, who is given something is called indirect object. Remember, what is given to somebody is direct object. Now, because there are two objects, we can transfer this in two different ways. First transformation of this is, I'll bring, okay, the first object, indirect object, rupain. So rupain, now the object becomes subject in your transformation. Then I identify the tense. What is the tense here? It's a present tense. Now present tense, if I remember the diagram that I've drawn before, okay, present tense requires, okay, am, is, okay, or are. So remember those words, I told you there are eight. Am, is, and are, are the one that you require, okay. Now here Rupin agrees with the subject, is in present tense. Rupen is. Now, because this sentence is negative, okay, I would transfer the negative auxiliary verb. Rupen isn't. And then, again, the final verb, the last verb of every PC voice is always verb 3. So, Rupen isn't offered. Now, offered what? A cake. 
by who? By Jackson. So Rupen is an offer a cake by Jackson. Now the, another way to do this because there are two objects is okay, a cake. The next object is a cake. A cake. Now simply a cake is again singular, so I would prefer to use the same verb to match the tense present. A cake isn't offered to who? To Rupen. Okay, by Jackson. See, here I've got transformation of a voice from active to passive with examples, okay, two objects. First object, second object, and then the transformations are here. Now, in your screen, you must have seen some more sentences. I will do that verbally. Brad gave the teacher a stupid explanation. Teacher, the teacher is one object. A stupid explanation is another. Tense is gave. It's past tense. So I would put it up like this. A uh, stupid explanation was, okay, given. Okay, now to whom? A stupid explanation, okay, was given to teacher by Brad. I use was because the tense is gave. In the same way, the teacher was given a stupid explanation by Brad. If I do this, okay, I have done two separate ways of transforming, okay, uh, the sentence having two objects. Remember, third, the plumber had answered my questions. Now this, okay, I need to draw it on the board so that I can help you understand the tense. The most difficult part in exam is like, okay, when you learn voice, it's easy if you learn s sentence wise, like in turns, because your teacher is guiding you. But in exam, what happens is like, you are given a sentence from anywhere out of all those tenses. And how do you get that idea? This is what we're going to talk about. The sentence here is, okay, the plumber had, okay, the plumber had, Positive, negative, it's up to you. That's your choice, all right? The plumber hadn't answered, answered my questions. See here, okay, how do you solve an example like such? The first thing, basics, again, we have got the plumber as the subject. This is the subject, you know it. Uh, my questions, okay is object the plumber hadn't answered my question so that object becomes the subject and that is my questions so the next step is you got to identify the tense your tense is here hadn't answered it's had plus verb three structure which indicates that it is past perfect tense so to match the tense in voice because I've already told you, we cannot okay, change the tense. The, cha the tense must remain constant. So my questions hadn't in the negative structure. And if you remember my diagram, okay, I used one B form of the verbs for pay, uh, using perfect tense. That is been. So my questions hadn't been answered. Okay? Now answered by whom? By the plumber by the i put it right here okay so that the camera can cover the words so my questions hadn't been answered by okay the plumber that is how it works i'll skip number four and move it to the question frame number three because this one is more difficult than the one that we were doing before because these are questions, and when you go work with questions, okay, it's, it's always difficult. So I've got a first question for you, and if you're going to appear SE in future, this question is frequently asked. Very simple looking question, did you do it? Okay, how do you transfer this into passive voice? Quite easy. In question, what we need to do is, okay, very quickly identify the tense. The tense here is indicated to us by 
the use of the verb did. So it is past tense. Now, if you remember my diagram that I have drawn okay, before, the diagram will tell you okay, that this is okay, past tense, and I got to use was or where. Now, how to use was, how to use where? Again, you got to find out the subject. So what is the subject here? You. So you did it. It's assertive transformation. You did it. So use the subject with you, okay, I would use, okay, was or where. So you, you know about that. I will never say something like you was. You always say you were because you is considered plural. So my answer would become, okay, where. Then if that is you, okay, so see, did you do it? Okay, if you consider it as your object or you as your subject, this is always okay challenging for us to do it, and that's why, if you really want to get it easy, always apply the translation. Did you do it? Okay, its simple translation in assertive is you did it. Now it is you did it. Okay, your basic transformation is like it was done by. You see, it was done by you. Now, with that idea, we come to know that our object is it. Subject is you. In passive, we do not focus on the subject. The object becomes the subject. Hence, okay, this becomes was because I relied on my idea of using transformation. See, sometimes you have to apply skills if you become confused in your examinations. Now, was, okay, it done by you becomes a simple transformation of did you do it was it done by you you did it it was done by you now I'm drawing this example just to make you familiar that okay you can apply a lot of techniques in understanding voice in your examinations more to work on okay I'll pick one more questions and this is going to be interesting number three okay from the screen when did the police catch the thog when did the police catch the thog? Okay, see, when did the police catch the thog? What is the subject? The police. What is the object? The thog. What is the tense? Did again. So with thog, okay, because this is WH question, you got to use the same WH word. And when is the WH word? When was the thog okay now catch it's a verb and it's verb 3 when was the thog caught I won't say okay by the police like because that is not important this is very obvious this is understood alright now to make it quite easy I would just like to draw that diagram for you very quickly it might help you for those who did not okay, make time in copying, see, and this time you'll get all those eight. I gave you in one tux, I gave you only seven in the beginning. Now you got all eight here. Is, um, are, okay, for simple present, was, and where, for simple past. They can be anywhere, okay? Not, not necessarily I kept this part here in the beginning. Now, okay, this is going somewhere else. B for simple future tense. You've got been, okay, for perfect tense. And then you got, okay, being for continuous. Now, we don't have a lot of time in dealing with all varieties of tense, but if you simply take this okay, diagram and if we have the basic understanding of tense, you can take everything to be yours. And believe me, it's going to be very, very easy. And one more thing you've got to know. There are 12 tenses. Out of those 12 sentences, out of those 12 sentences, only eight can be put into passive. The perfect continuous tense and fu future continuous tense cannot be put into passive voice. All right, so today I took nearly 30 minutes and I tried to explain to you what is voice, how to understand voice, and I even brought to you okay, my diagram of understanding voice structures. 
which is uh, completely okay, uh, dissimilar to the one that we have been learning in schools with subject plus verb plus object syntax styles. So next time, I'll try to cover a few more examples on this and begin with the next chapter. For today, this much. Uh, immediately after my class is over, in a few minutes, you will be listening to okay, Sabina Sresta, ma'am, and she's covering science class for grade 8. Uh, I'll catch you people okay, next time, next week, on the same day, same time. Have a good time. Okay, we'll meet again. Thank you very much.